Hi everyone, so this is a little game development quick tip um, for you environment artists or uh, world builders. Um, this can be applied to other things like um, decorating things down um, cords or rope on characters and things like that. Um, primarily from my experience, we used it in a lot of the car racing, the Need for Speed games that I worked on. We used it to um, duplicate items down a spline and basically run down things like park benches or um, most commonly light poles. So what I'm going to do here is go create standard primitives in a box and I'm just going to create a little box here and um, really this is just going to be to demonstrate something like a um, imagine this was a light pole going down a street or um, a telephone pole or something like that. So I'm going to hit the T key and you can see here that we are in the top view and when you're uh, laying out your tracks or your streets or your environments it's always really good to kind of look at your concept or your design from the top. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw a spline that's going to represent our road real quick and I'm going to go create shapes and I'm going to create a line. I'm going to hit the S key and kind of snap to the grid a little here. I'm going to turn it off and we'll just make some curves. It doesn't even, it doesn't have to be pretty at all. In fact, it can just sort of be like a racetrack um, type thing. Um, kind of like that. And if we draw over that last point, it asks if ask us if we want to close it, and we do. If you didn't snap to the grid, this is your little snaps toggle here. If you click the right mouse button on it, you'll see that grid points is one of the options that you can snap to. Okay? If that's enabled, you'll be able to snap to the grid when you hit S, and you'll notice that your little reticle here snaps to it. I'm going to hit the P key to go back into um, perspective. And the grid there is kind of hiding um, part of our spline a little bit. But imagine, and then I'm going to just hold down, I'm going to see what this is. Okay, it's a line, so I'm going to hold down right mouse button, convert to editable spline, so we can kind of get the uh, vertices on it. I'm going to click the right mouse button on that and change it to Bezier. Um, you'll notice that's neat about splines. If you switch it to corner, it'll give you a hard corner. And uh, if you switch it to smooth, you'll get an automated kind of interpolated curve. And then Bezier will give you kind of handles. Um, that's neither here nor there for this tutorial. So now that we have our path or our road, um, I'll show you a couple techniques here real quick. So the first one is, hey, let's just duplicate an item um, down, this, down this path. So imagine this was a street light and this was our street. So we want to select the item that we want to duplicate down and go Tools, Align, Spacing Tool. And then the first thing you want to do is pick your path. So with that clicked, it's going to ask you to click on a path. And then once you click it, it'll have done it. Okay, so the funny thing about this tool, at least in the computers I use at work and at home, it only displays um, what's happening if you have the spacing tool window active and selected. Okay, if you select out of it, um, it you lose that ability to visualize that, and I think that's kind of silly. Um, so here we go. The count is how many we're going to basically duplicate down this line and the spacing is the really important part. So if we put 12 meters between each one, that's 12 metric units between each um, item. If we put 5, then we have obviously less distance than 12. So now it's at 5 meters every one. For something like um, street lights, they might be every 60 meters down your path. Okay, you can also specify um, based on the starting point. If you look at the vertices, this right here is my first. Um, you'll notice it's your colored um, vertice in your spline. It's the first one. Oh, see, I accidentally um, duplicated the spline itself. Um, that's where your start point would be. So you can do a start offset, and this is pretty cool. 
you can actually offset um, everything from that so that it doesn't start right at that first vertice and there are opportunities for that to be useful. You can do the same thing with the end offset. I don't really use those. You can do free center. You can divide evenly with the objects at the end. So in this case, it will actually do the exact count of objects that you gave in this count and kind of ignore the uh, spacing property. Um, all these other ones use all the different types of offsets and they're very unique and pretty awesome. Um, let's oh put that back to a default of something like 50. Um, another interesting attribute you're going to want to play with, uh, depending on how you want it to work in yours. Um, right now I have follow turned on, so these are actually following the um, vector of the curve, so it's they're facing down the curve. If I turn this off, they're all facing down um, y and x in the world. And I don't know if that demonstrates it well enough. Let's go back to the tool. That kind of demonstrates it. Let me, uh, we'll make this an unrealistic. As you can see your source object, it um, updates in the spacing tool, which is cool. So you'll see that they're all facing down um, world coordinates here. If we do follow down the curve, they will face down the curve. Um, and then of course you can use the object centers, which I never do. I don't know what that does. I always use the edges. You can do a type of instance, a copy or a reference. And then when you're done, just hit apply. Um, if you can want to go back in there and um, if you want to go back in there and kind of mess with the vertices and all of that and kind of change the path, you um, oh, I made that mistake of having the path selected again. Make sure you have that object selected. I think go back in and it'll update um, for that. Um, some other things I've used it for is to actually create road, but you don't need to do that. You'll see what I mean here in a moment. Um, if we if we decrease the spacing pretty much to well, it's better than to use spacing to use the count for this, but basically you can, and it seems counterintuitive, but you can actually make a surface this way too by using a flat object. Um, I would not recommend that. So I'm going to hit apply and we're done with it. Um, and then we could go in here and you could add a sweep modifier to this type of a bar and then um, you could have your road that way and in this case if you wanted your um, your uh, street poles not centered in the road on this spline you can convert this to an editable poly I'd always suggest taking your spline duplicating it hiding it making it as like a background reference and then convert your uh, your duplicated spline to um, to the poly right so that way you always have the spline to uh, go back to because right now we've collapsed it and kind of destroyed our spline what I'm gonna do is select this outer edge loop here and I'm gonna um, and I'm gonna do that by double clicking on one of the edges and it'll do edge selection I'm gonna create shape from selection um, it can be linear I don't care and um, basically if we check in our basically if you check here in your layer manager you'll see the shape created from it and there it is if I lift it up and pull it out so what we can do at this point is kind of I'm trying to trying to hide that selection but it won't um, the viewport won't let me do that so then at this point we could select our object tool align spacing tool pick the path hit apply leave the tool um, go back in here and find that now our street poles are down the edge of the road and basically if you had when we use the spacing tool 
Let me go back in here. I closed it too soon. If you had used an instance or a reference, um, if you wanted to make your street poles more narrow or adjust your source art here, all of these other ones would have would update with it, but they're not going to update now because I've went and done created them just as a copy. Uh, the other thing you might want to do is just go in here with your. Um, I want to see if I have my the line. It's very hard to see. See if I have the line actually selected. And you can go in, and I believe it's with the segments. You can go in here in segment mode. No, it is not. It is in spline mode. So in spline mode, and there's this outline, and that'll allow you to sort of, ah, of course I didn't do it wide enough so you can't see it. That right there, the outline of 10 meters out, what that did was that um, allowed me to offset the spline, basically making a copy. So I can delete that interior um, copy of the spline and then now I have this one that's um, kind of offset away from my road a bit and you could run your telephone poles out on that. Now of course you'd want to go in here um, with in vertex mode and kind of if you got any funky overlap or anything just go in there and delete all those funky points and kind of match it up as close you know to your road as possible. So at this point we could select our our little street pole, pick the path, and we've got a nice offset path, right? We could delete all those ones we ran right alongside the road, or, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. There's a lot of versatility. That is tools, a line, and the spacing tool. It's awesome in Max. All it requires is a model with art, textures, doesn't matter, and a spline to basically run that model or object down. All right. Hopefully that tutorial is useful and um, helps you on your way to your game development projects. Thank you very much.